Welcome guys, in this episode of the Lesser Known Math, we will talk about the q Hochstetter sequence that you see over here. As you can notice, it's really similar to the Fibonacci sequence. However, its behavior is quite interesting, so I invited Professor Nathan Fox from Canisius College to tell us more about it. He has several papers about the sequence, so it's going to be really interesting. So the Hochstetter q sequence first appeared in the classic book Gödel Escherbach by Douglas Hofstetter, and he refers to it there as a meta-Fibonacci sequence. Instead of Fibonacci, where to get the nth term, you take the n minus first term and the n minus second term, so you go back one and two terms and then add them together. For the Q sequence, you look at the previous two terms, they tell you how far to go back, then you add those terms together. The resulting sequence is very different from Fibonacci. Whereas the Fibonacci sequence, we have a closed formula for the nth term, really, really well understood, really easy to predict what's going on. This sequence is, you can compute the terms, but it's very hard to understand. So just like Fibonacci, we start with 1, 1 as our initial conditions. And to work with a recurrence like this, you just sort of have to write it down and expand everything out. So if we want to know what Q of 3 is, so this is q of 3 minus q of 2 plus q of 3 minus q of 1. Then q of 2 and q of 1 are earlier terms in the sequence that we already know. In this case, there are our initial conditions. So this is q of 3 minus 1 plus q of 3 minus 1. So that's q of 2 plus q of 2. And again, q of 2 and q of 2 are both terms that we already know. So this is 1 plus 1, or 2. So the third term in the sequence is 2. And you can keep going, but that would not make a very exciting video, so I will stop here. And instead I will talk about what happens. If you compute a few more terms, you will see that the sequence begins 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, and this looks nice. It looks like it's maybe increasing by 1 every time. Maybe we can predict what's going on. But then at some point you get... 10, 10, 9, or something like this, where it stops being monotone, and then just sort of it goes crazy. So if you look at a graph of this sequence, you actually get some interesting patterns, but they're almost patterns. In fact, no one has been able to prove that these patterns actually exist. We just can do statistical analysis on them. But you get little periodic pieces where you have big jumps in craziness, then it gets simpler. And each of these things is about twice as long as the previous. We have lots of empirical evidence for this, but no proof. There's two problems here. So number one, so this, this thing does appear to kind of be along a line. And this line is, uh, is y equals x over 2. So the slope of this line is a half. It's fairly easy to prove that if the limit as n goes to infinity of q of n over n exists, it has to equal one half. But again, we don't know that this limit exists. In fact, we don't even know that this sequence is infinite. How could that be? Well, suppose we're going along and we're computing terms, and let's say we get to some q of n, and let's say that that q of n is greater than n. There's no inherent reason why that shouldn't be able to happen here. Then you go and compute q of n minus 1, or so q of n plus 1, and this would be q of n plus 1 minus q of n plus another term, but this thing in here would be non-positive. We only right. define starting from q of 1. So if this happens, the sequence immediately stops and we have a finite sequence. Correct. We have no proof whether or not this happens. Computational uh, evidence suggests the sequence is infinite. We know that such, such a thing does not happen in the first 10 billion terms. 